So I made this horror game called Silent Ward, and I think it has a pretty good AI in it. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to make that AI. So the AI that I made is a really advanced goblin AI, and also has the ability to hear people's voices. So if someone yells, then the AI will go to that person. So before we start, we need to go to settings and scroll all the way down to here, and make sure you have beta content on. All right, so the first thing we're going to spawn in is the spawner component and configure the spawner component and make it a... Usually what I use is a mouse bot, but you could use like a goblin or or one that you might think is better, but I'm just going to use a mouse bot for now. If you want to change it later, then you can just go out here, click select, select it, go to configure, and you can set your object again. All right, now let's bring the spawner component up here. And now we're going to need your monster. So just make a monster real quick or spawn in one or, or if you have one already. I'm just going to use a cube for now. So make sure you have your pivot point right here in the center of your monster. So if you don't know how to do that, click edit. Edit on your makeup pin. Edit your object. Select it. Option center pivot on selection and it centers it. And this blue right here, the blue line right there that's going to be the front facing part of your monster so now configure your monster you go down here and add a tag to it i'm just going to add a tag of m and scroll all the way down and can modify the circuits turn it on and i'm just going to make mine decorational so now i'm just going to spawn in the basic circuits for this so i'm just going to set transform and update 30 hertz event receiver and a rec room object to get first with tag and you're going to put your monster tag in this tag right here so mine would be in so now we need to make sure these circuits are only running for the room authority so i'm gonna get if local player is room authority connect this up to here and i'm gonna and i'm gonna make it so if the bot is valid then it will start going so we don't have to keep on disconnecting the update that hurts so an if chip and is valid i'm gonna get a clone this update 30 hertz right here and make this a AI spawned. Now, you're going to use this right here for the AI. Can accept it is valid. So now, connect up the then to the set transform. So it will be checking if it is true. Then it will start spawning the position of that to your AI. Alright, your target for the set transform is your Rickram object at first with tag. So connect up the target. But we don't want your monster to be sending position of the exact position of the AI down there. So we're gonna need to remake it so the monster will set the position of its Y value like way up there. So we're gonna get a vector three create and a vector three split. So we need to get position, so we need to get the position of the AI, connect up to the vector three split, connect these up and make your Y. It depends on how far your map is up. So, so before you wanna start with this AI, you're going to want to make your map first so it's like you have your map and then your map is cloned down. So it's the exact same map underneath your original map. So for me, I'm just going to use this floor right here for this AI and this roof right here for the monster, this cube right here. So your Y is going to be different than mine. I, I would always recommend making your map go way up in the sky or your AI map go way down below. So, so you players can't hear your mouse bot or whatever AI you're using. So I think, I don't know, this will be about, I'm just going to do 10 for now. And to get the rotation, we will need a combatant get velocity. And now the combatant is the AI, and the velocity will be our rotation. So now if we spawn this in, then it'll say there's no nav mesh, so we got to make the nav mesh first. So now this, yeah, this should be spawning up here. Also, one more thing, configure your spawner component and scroll down and turn behavior on spawn disengaged and turn this off. So now go to this room, settings, scroll all the way down, scroll down to here and click bake nav mesh. Now we have our nav mesh for the AI. But if we spawn it in, then he still won't move because he doesn't have a target to get so we're gonna make it so once he spawns in he will go to a certain target so we're gonna need these ai path points for its wandering so it can wander around the map 
configure the AF path point and delete its object board and give it a tag or just keep the tag AI path point. So now I'm just going to clone these of where you want the AI to go. All right, so now if you go to your connect tool and you can now connect these to each of the path points. So what this will do, if the AI, when the AI goes to one of these path points, it will choose of which, which one it wants to go to. And that should be good, so the AI will randomly be going in this area if he doesn't have a target to get, like a player. And on spawn, let me get a delay, make this delay like one second, and get an AI set patrol point, a random from list, and a record object get all with tag. So now what this will do, once the AI spawns, it will get a random one of these things to go to, and it will go to it, and it will keep on pathing to each of these path points. So put your AI path point tag in here. After delay, randomize, and then set patrol point. But we can't connect this up to here. We need to get a certain chip. Yeah, a from record object. And now we should be able to connect these up. And your AI is just your AI up here. Okay, so I just realized that a mouse bot, it won't path to these points for some reason. I don't know why. So I guess just uh, switch it to a melee goblin. And then once you spawn it in, then it should start pathing to these points. Okay, so now we need to make it so... When a player is close to your monster up here, then it will chase it. So we need a get closest and a get all players chip. And the origin will be your monster up there, so this right here. And we're not going to be using this distance right here. We're going to make it so the AI can't detect you through walls. So we're going to be using a ray cast. And the distance right here is going to be your AI's like distance of how far I can see. So I'm just going to do... 10. I'm going to clone this get position. I'll put it down here. Connect your monster to the get position. And this will be the start position of the ray cast. And the direction. We need to get the direction from the AI to the closest player. So it should be, ray cast should be always be pointing at me. So connect this up to the direction. And you get a player head position. Alright, and we need to subtract the player head position from the position of that monster up there and then this should always be pointing at me but the player is invalid because it's up there and the ray cast is hitting this wall right here or the ceiling so it's not detecting me but if i go up here then it will detect me so now we need an if is valid so we're going to get if this player right here is valid then it will start chasing them so, to make the AI chase them, we need an AI path 2. Can accept the then and the AI. And the target will be the closest player. So now, if I spawn this in, he should be running around. Then if I go close to him, he will start pathing to me. But now, since he has no other target, then he just stays still. So we're going to make it so if he doesn't have, if this is false, then it will get another path point to go to. So we need this to only activate once because we're going to use this random right here and we don't want it constantly to be random, randomizing the patrol point. So we need to get an if, a bool variable, and it can accept it here, and it'll check if the bool variable is false. If it is false, it will switch the bool variable to true. Then this will activate this right here. So now this only will activate once, but we need to make it so we need to clone this bool variable up here and switch this to false and connect this up to here. So once so once it gets a player, then it will change this bool to false so it could a execute this again. So now if we spawn him in, then he goes to the path points. If I go close to him, he will path to me. If I go far away enough from him, then he goes to the path points. So now we need to set that AI speed. So when the AI sees you, then it will increase its speed. So get an AI set pathing speed chip, connect it to the AI. And your speed, it could just be whatever, so I'm just going to do 5. And then clone this down to right here. 
And we're just gonna uh, disconnect this, connects up to the AI set pathing speed, and then connect this back up to the random. And this is the AI. And then this is gonna be a slower speed since it's gonna be wandering. So I'm just gonna make this one three. So now if I spawn it in, it's not going to slow, but if it sees me, he increases the speed. So right now, when the AI sees you, and you go behind a wall, then it will go back to pathing. But we want it to make it so, when the AI sees you, and you go behind the wall, then it will keep on chasing you until, until it sees you again, or until a couple of seconds later, if it doesn't see you. If you know what I mean. So I'm just going to select all of these and scoot this over, because we're going to need to fit another if chip in here. Clone this over, connect this up to here, and connect this up to the else. So what this is going to be is it's going to get the player, and it's going to save the player that it's chasing. And then if it doesn't, if this doesn't detect, or if this doesn't detect a player, but it still, it, but it chased, just was chasing a player, then it will keep on trying to path to that player. Then it will go back to its normal pathing. So we're going to need a player variable. And this player variable is the closest player, so it's going to be the player that is chasing. And we're going to clone this same player variable over here and get another is valid. Connects up to here. Connects up to the if chip. So if this is valid, then it will keep on pathing to the same position. Or keep on pathing to this player right here. But we need a delay on when this variable will reset. Spawn a delay. Connect this up to the delay. Make this however many seconds. I'm just going to do like uh, four seconds. And after the delay, it'll cancel. On cancel, it will clone this variable. Make this invalid. And it'll reset the variable once the delay is done. And on run, it will set the, this variable. I'm gonna make the delay longer. Just a little bit. I'm gonna make it like six seconds just for test it. So he's pad thing right now. So if he sees, sees me, I mean, I go over the wall, then he keeps on chasing me. Go over here again, then he will keep on going. Forward. So now I'm gonna make it so if you're talking too loud next to the AI, then it will hear you and it will chase you. So we're going to need to get a player get volume chip, clone this update 30 hertz, clone this if chip, and we're going to need a greater or equal. So if the player's volume, if they're talking too loud, if it's greater or equal than however much you want. So I'm just going to do like point, um, point 0.4, because this, this doesn't go high at all. It barely goes up to 1. Connect the update here to the if chip. Then we're gonna connect this up to this AI path point right here. Let me reduce this to like two. So now if I just talk, it will do that. So now if I execute it, and if I just talk, he should, yep, he comes over to me. But to make it a little better, we're gonna make it so players should talk louder the further away they are from the AI. So so we can divide this distance right here by however much you want. So I'm just going to go like 100. So now since I'm close to it, this value will be lower. But if I get further away, then this value will be a little bit higher. So you can talk louder if the further away are from them. And to make this a little bit better, if you're making a two-story map, then we're going to need to do this. So, clone your vector 3 split and vector 3 create. And we need to get the position of these this closest player, but only to the position down here. So, Because right now, it's trying to path point to the player that's up here. So it's going to want to go up, like get uh, the closest it can to him. So if there's stairs like over there, then it will know that there's stairs and it will know that it needs to go up the stairs to come get you. So we need to subtract the y value by what your y value on this would be. So mine was just 10. And for this one too, we're going to need an add chip. We need to add the y by 10. 
So now we need to, I'm just going to clone this, get position, put it right here. Get position of the closest player. Connect this up to here. And then this is going to be the target. So that just makes it a little better for maps that are two-story. And also, by the way, this spawner component, they only spawn if the room authority is executing this. Same with the reset. So what that means is the room authority, that means like, I guess the first player to join the room or, or it's the authority of the room. That's like, um, it, it, it's only if they're executing this, then the AI will spawn. But I'm going to show you how to make it so anyone could execute it and it will spawn. So I just made this for all chip, but I'm just going to edit it and show you what it is. So what it is, it's just a event definition, event, event sender, and event receiver. And I just connected them all up. And then configure your event sender and make it the target be room authority. Let me just rename the chip. So now, if anyone executes this, then it will execute for me, which it will spawn the AI in. But for the only for the room authority, the set the set position of your cube right here will be like smooth for the room authority. But for everybody else, it'll look like it's kind of choppy. But I can make it so it will only be smooth for the player that is chasing. So we would get rid of this chip right here. So we're instead of that other chip, we're going to get at if local player should run. Connects up to here and should run connect there. And this acting player right here is going to be the closest player. So now that should run smoother for this for the player that's getting chased. But it, it, it might be a little bit buggy. Or if it ever it like bugs out or anything, then just just keep a room authority chip. And it's not really that big of a deal. It's just more of a kind of a visual thing. Oh yeah, one really important thing. Um make these bool variables right here synced same with th this player variable right here make those synced and if you want the ai to have a let's say you your monster has a running animation and a walking animation then you don't want these to always be activating on that animation so what we'll do is just take this and just clone it up to here and it's just going to execute once again, so rename this variable. We don't want it the same variable as that. I'm just going to call it that. Call it bool. And then it will check if it is false. If it is false, this is the true. It'll execute once. This will execute once. And then you could just connect your animation up to this end of the variable right here. And then for the bool right here, Put this down to here. Just disconnect this real quick. Change this to false. And connect this up to the random from list. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this how to tutorial on how to make this goblin AI. Let me know if you need any help or something in the comments. I will most likely res be responding to your comments and helping you on whatever you need to help with. I hope this helps with your horror games or whatever you're putting this AI in your rooms. Feel free to change any of it and stuff, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later.